you know, what do people do with a New Year's resolution? They come up with something they kind of want. It's not a compelling vision. They don't really have strong enough reasons, and they never review it again until they notice that they broke what they said they really want to have make happen, because they didn't really resolve. If you resolve, you got the vision, it's compelling, you review it daily and you feel it, you envision it and you experience it. Simple as it sounds. Now, ultimately, what is this really about? Ultimately, if you're going to have lasting change in anything, you're really talking about just raising your standards. I mean, I always tell people, if you want to know how to change your life, I give it to you in three words, boring as it sounds, raise your standards. We said there were two ways, though, that we could change our state. One was to change our what now, nice and loud? Or the other is to change our focus. Change the way we're representing things to ourselves, like picturing things in our head is one way we focus. Somebody doesn't show up on time, we picture our head, I'll see why, because they're out there messing around, because they don't care about me, because this and this and this. Another way we focus is by what we say to ourselves. We represent, oh, well, they're not doing it probably because they don't really love me. We talk to ourselves in certain ways. We get all these negative feelings. But if we change what we focus on, we change what we feel. If you think of something you're afraid of and you focus on it, will you feel it? You bet. If you wanted to feel depressed right now, how many could pull it off? No problem. How would you do it? You remember, don't you? A little reminder here. Just put yourself in a lousy physiology. Or, easily, another way you could do it, of course, mess up your biochemistry. Eat in a way that drops your blood sugar through the floor. Or how else could you pull it off? Uh, all you have to do is think of something that once happened that made you feel bad. Something in the past and remember it again. That seems very intelligent, doesn't it? And feel bad about it once again. How many of you would go to a movie that was terrible over and over and over and over again? How many would think that would be real intelligent? Let me see your show of hands. If you, one of your friends said, yeah, I'm going to this movie, I hate it, it sucks, I'm going back there again. You go, how many times have you been to this movie? About 4,000. What would you probably ask them? Why would you go back there? Well, because I have to. Would you believe them? I don't believe you either. When you tell me that. But I always believe in you. Because I know you know better. You don't need to go to those movies anymore. They're a bunch of myths anyway, made by poor directors. Lousy writers. Lousy producers. You're a better producer, director, and writer now. You're probably even a better actor. Or actress. So why not create it the way you want it? Instead of seeing the same old movies over and over again. Most producers I know don't sit and watch their worst movies over and over and over again and feel bad about them again. What the most of them do is they go, that was part of my learning experience. Time to move on. How else could you feel bad, by the way? You could do it currently, couldn't you? All you have to do is think of something you think you've lost that maybe hasn't even happened. Or think of something that you want, but you're not getting right now. Feel bad about it. Or you could think of something that hasn't even happened yet and feel bad about it in advance. I mean, really, how many years ago did you come up with what you could and couldn't do in your life? How many years ago? Most people, if they really look at how they're living their life today, it's based on a set of standards, a set of beliefs that they made choices about 10, 20, 30 or more years ago. I mean, very often we made decisions in our youth or very young about what to believe, about what we were capable of, about who we are as a person, and that becomes the glass ceiling, if you will, that controls us. There's a, a corny metaphor, but it's true. I remember one time I was with my family at the circus, and there was a person there, and they had this big, giant elephant. And you look at this elephant, and they take this little rope, put it around the elephant's neck, and they drive this stake into the ground. And I mean, you look at this and you know that elephant could rip down the entire tent with almost no effort. And yet, the elephant doesn't struggle, doesn't try. Why? Because the elephant's conditioned. And they take that elephant, condition the elephant when it's a baby elephant. That's how they train him. When it's a little baby elephant and it doesn't have the power yet, they put a big rope around it and they drive this huge stake in the ground and the elephant fights and fights and fights. And one day, finally, that elephant decides, I'm not capable of pulling this out. And once that becomes the definition of an identity of anyone, an elephant in this case, they don't even try anymore. It's just who I am, that's how it is, that's just the way it is in my life. I'd like to ask you to take a look at any place you've got a limitation and ask yourself, when did I decide to accept that limitation? All of these things, it's impossible to leave them out. It's like, what's more important, you know, the molecule or the atom, you know? The cell or the organ, the organ or the human, the human or the planet, you know what I mean? The planet or the solar system. If you take anything out of the chain of existence, things break down. But one of the things that pulls it all together is your mind and your emotions, your spirit. And people face issues all the time. They don't equally deal with those issues. And some people are told they're terminal or you got a 5% chance of living. 
and something happens inside them. They don't start breaking down. Some of you tell them that they start to die. They just accept it. Other people fight through. And so I really want to see if we can't trigger that in you, whether you're facing something severe or not, that mindset, that power, that will to bring energy forward when you don't feel like it. It's critical. So what's the problem? The problem is energy is a habit. Science now shows about 48% of what we do every day is habitual, meaning We say some of the same things, we think some of the same thoughts, we have some of the same emotions, even if the environment changes. We have this emotional home, this habitual home we get back to. You know what's interesting? You can become awake and you can change where you live emotionally. You can shift it all, but you will not do it without energy. So if we agree energy is one of the most important elements to success in life, then question is this, where are you versus where do you need to be? And secondly, Where does energy come from? Let's say you you, this morning, I wake up sometimes, one of the dumbest questions I've been asked in the media my entire career is, I know when they're gonna say it, they get this look on their face and they say things like, you seem so energized, your energy is really strong, but don't you have bad days? Don't you have days when you wake up in the morning and you're exhausted and and you're just like, you know, you you just don't feel like doing anything and you're, you're watching TV and eating Cheetos and watching porn. And I said, well, I do some of those things, right? But it's so silly, of course I've had bad times, but I really don't have bad days anymore. It's not because I'm superhuman, it's like a trainer. Like if you train your muscle, you're gonna have a strong bicep, right? And I've trained myself emotionally to be emotionally fit. So it doesn't mean I'm perfect or I don't feel any bad feelings. During COVID, I felt all those feelings, but I didn't stay there because I trained myself and I keep training myself and I measure where am I zero to 10. And if I'm at a seven, I couldn't come out here and serve you to seven. I wouldn't be Tony Robbins. I wouldn't be able to serve people. Now I can, go to 20 on a zero to 10 scale and then drop down to eight, nine, 10, feel comfortable. But I'm showing you the tip of the iceberg when I needed all that energy's there. How many follow what I'm talking about? Get a sense of what I mean by this, say I. Because emotion is created by motion. If you use more of what God has given you, you will feel more. But most of us have learned to shrink how we use our bodies in the cultures we live in today. Most people's idea of exercise is fill the tub, pull the plug, and fight the current. (laughs) People get injured typing today. Ooh, that hurts. Scary. Use your body, you will feel more alive. And the same thing is true with these couples. Now, was that the best greeting you're capable of giving another human being? Yes or no? Some of you are saying yes, most of you are saying no. Let's review the exercise. I said if you don't give your best, everyone you care about... Listen, if you said no, I respect you because you were honest. Because whenever we say we've given our best, it's always a lie. Because whenever you get there, what do we always discover? There's another level. Every four years for centuries in the Olympics, what happens? People run faster, they jump higher, they lift more weight. Every four years for thousands of years. How, how has this happened? Drugs, that's how. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, that was just a recent thing. <laughs> The point of the matter is, whenever you get the way you think your best is, it opens up another possibility. And this is what couples have to see. They think they've already had their best days in the beginning. And some of us have been guilty of encouraging or agreeing with that. And that's the worst thing you could possibly do. This idea, when I first started coming out doing the things I was doing, I'll never forget, the attacks on me were, he's raising people's expectations and they're gonna be disappointed. I hope the hell so disappointment if you don't have a higher expectation get disappointed you're not going for anything you're not alive and it's like the disappointment will either drive you or crush you you get to decide which one it's going to be absolutely 
So, since that clearly wasn't the best one you're capable of giving, we have to take up one more level. You say, what are we gonna do, get naked? No, no, no. <laughs> this time what I want you to do is I want you to greet people like they're your long lost lover or best friend. Like, oh my God, look, it's Mary. Look at her, oh my God, there she is. Ah! I want you to greet people like your long lost lover or best friend. Ready, go, go, go. We need to know you for one major thing first. He works, he produces. A person with passion always stands out. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, you're... says no you just say this is what we do it's what we do now and that's your new norm head first don't worry about the what ifs and make yourself can swim cut it off cut it off cut it off do what you're supposed to do you ain't no boy no more Being a Christian back then was not called socially acceptable. They didn't have 125,000 in the Los Angeles Coliseum to hear Billy Graham on a Sunday afternoon. Not back in those days. Back in those days when the Christians got in the Coliseum, it was a different story, right? I mean, the word was, stay out of the Coliseum, especially on Sunday. Last Sunday was Lions 33 Christians, nothing.